fucking be like the aside. The aside, right? The aside. Yes. Ready? Let's see how accurate that is. Sounds about right. You should be hanging out with those guys. Black circle boys. That's what they call themselves. They're into the occult. It's Shane Singh. He's the crazy one over there. Thinks he's the Antichrist or something. I played video games in a drunken haze. I was 17 years young. Our credits roll over some all-American boys getting smashed and throwing beer bottles off of a roof. They nearly get arrested until the cops who show up receive a more important call and leave them to their drunken ways. And then Terry falls over. Terry? Terry! Oh my god, he fell! Dude doesn't look very concerned that his friend just fucking died. An unknown time later, we see Kyle, he's the bald dude from earlier, who apparently was affected by his friend Terry's death because now he's a typical brooding teenager upset that his family has moved from wherever they were to this new town. Now, being the new kid sucks, so looking for any place to fit in, he finds an ad looking for a hardcore drummer tacked on the board at school and takes it. And then while having another cigarette, Jesus, this dude smokes more than I do. We're introduced to Chloe, who takes him to a safer spot to smoke so he won't get caught by the principal. Now they get to know each other a little bit here, discussing music, and she gives a bit of exposition on the boys we've been seeing in the background all this time. Black circle boys. That's what they call themselves. They're into the occult and speed metal and all that shit. Later in class, we're introduced a little further to the antics of some of the black circle boys. It's your typical high school fuckery. Boom mic. Boom mic, boom mic, boom mic. After some back and forth with Shane judging Kyle's character to see if he's cool enough to fit into his band, he just, for no reason at all, goes Ozzy Osbourne on this fucking frog. Get off the table right now! Get off the fucking table now! Back at home, Kyle's dad is being a douchebag. Elbows off the table, please. His mom is being nosy. So I was school today. And now I completely understand why he's so moody. That family is lame. That's your mother in complete sentences. He meets up with Chloe again, and the two seem to be forming a meaningful connection before they head to school. And once in class, Kyle tries really hard to be a badass in front of his new group here. Mr. Sullivan has learned to defy the laws of nature pertaining to water and is able to move through it at alarming speed, so... Leave me the fuck alone. <laughs> well, that's not the right answer at all. You should go to the principal's office and talk to him about it. But in fairness, the teacher should get off of his ass about his past as a swimmer. Nobody wants to be put on the spot like that, especially the new kid at a new school in a new town and one that has recently lost his best friend. Now he's sent to the principal who summarizes the events of the movie thus far with the following words. Blah, 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 blah. After that little chat, which seems to go nowhere, Kyle meets up with the gang on the field who are getting high and you know how it is, you always gotta take a hit to prove that you're cool and shit. And once he does that, he's as good as in. Excellent. After a small scene with his mother where she attempts to build a connection with him since he's not been the same since Terry died, he heads out again to meet up with the guys. They end up just taking a bunch of drugs and Shane starts to let him in on what they do, or at least how fucking crazy they are. Nice motherfucker, it's good, right? I'll take some of this, bounce it out. Kyle, take it. We all have to be equally fucked up for the blood ritual. Now, sometime later, Chloe finds oh, Kyle nearly okay. passed out from all the drugs, and when she gets him up to return to the group, they all but her cut their hands and blah 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 blah. Generic blood Satan voodoo ritual bullshit. We get a montage. Who knows how much time is passing here? But all it does is further establish Kyle's involvement in the group. Now, after pretentiously posing for an album cover, Shane dives into the nearby lake and holds his breath underwater for like 10 minutes, claiming it's the power. Alive and dead at the same time. Hmm. Huh. They break into a house that night, stealing a bunch of guns, and then like the world's dumbest criminals script just being written right before our eyes. They just lounge around on the couch getting high and shit. I love Transformers. <laughs> <laughs> Surprisingly, nothing seems to come of it, and soon after, they're on their way to visit Grego. You a fucking not pretty boy? Fuck you. <laughs> it's Kyle, oh, man. Grego, he's a good soldier. Hey, let's go pool hopping. Yes! <laughs> What's pool hopping? They go pool hopping, and Shane, if he wasn't already fucking nuts, goes so batshit here, I don't know what the hell makes these kids want to still hang out with him. We're not fucking gun at me! Just go. I'll make you suck my cock in hell. Fucking dead. 
After obsessing over the previous exchange for a minute, Shane stashes the stolen goods in a nearby tree, and we're back in school again where the teacher is still pressing Kyle about his good grades and swimming record. Now after ditching school, the boys head to Shane's house where, after a Billy Badass moment, I'm going running, and when I get back, you both better be gone, okay? We get a bit more backstory on Shane's home life. Ronnie and Shane, died. Or have somebody that balances you out. Like, whatever you are, it's completely balanced out by who they are. I gotta say here, the movie's doing a really good job of balancing exposition through character development and backstory and pacing it really well. I'm a little surprised, honestly. It's not that boring. It's kind of interesting, and they're revealing just a little bit as you go. Get you a little bit hooked in this story. Kyle and Chloe get it on at the pool, I guess, and later we find the group at Grego's club, crowd surfing and rocking out. Shane hops on stage to give the band some drugs and attempts to solicit some advice for his up-and-coming band. Yeah, I ain't seen one of these motherfuckers play an instrument. But the singer kicks him off stage, literally, and then the ass-kicking begins. The next morning, Kyle's mother attempts to be the mother that apparently she hasn't been for the last eight months. We're wondering if you'd like to talk about Terry. And through what I'd normally say was nothing more than like your typical high school kid parent fuss. You're only like eight months late. Yeah, well, sometimes we're just shitty parents, Kyle. I'm trying, okay? The scene decently delivers to us the suffering Kyle has endured from both the loss of his friend and the loss of his dad in a way since he's so work obsessed. Get out of my fucking room. No! Oh, yeah! Get out of my fucking room! The guys get stoned on the field per the usual routine, all except for the little goober they relentlessly pick on. He's just standing there trying to get a hit and they won't let him. Or he'll be asleep. <laughs> Is that final puff puff? Pass the dutchie, my friends. They meet up at the cemetery, and Shane is still moaning about the old man rightfully defending his property. He finds the mescaline missing, and Opie shows up with a pretty badass explorer. You know that shit's like an LTD or ESP. Ain't no goddamn way it's a real Gibson. Apparently, he traded the mescaline for. Shane is pissed at his betrayal of the group, but he does kind of like the guitar. That's funny. You know, I'm torn with this next scene on many fronts. It's silly sometimes. Displease the father. I didn't mean to displease the father. I didn't mean to displease the father. But I love it too because of the depth involved on both actors' parts. It's more well delivered than you might think. First of all, look how few cuts there are. You see why you're not ready to be a part of the black circle? Do you? Uh, yeah. I fucked up. I fucked up. That's an amazing performance to pull off in such a long take. One dude's getting slapped around, genuinely looking frightened. Shane genuinely looks like a psychotic asshole, and it's all because there's no unnecessary cuts fucking up your immersion. Shane and the Joker make Rory dig up a grave, which tires him to the point of physical exhaustion. And feeling nauseous, Kyle attempts to help him out. You can tell by this point he's starting to feel uneasy about Shane's antics and feels some pity for Rory. Shane, like a dick, just shovels a bunch of dirt in his face, calls him a pussy a few times, and Joker keeps on joking. Until Rory finally gives in and continues digging. Alright, so look, after a pit stop, we find the boys in the woods with a bag. They opened it, one meow came out, and I fast forwarded right the fuck on through whatever the hell it is they did. So, if you want to watch that shit, you can go watch it yourself. I know it's fake, I know it's just a movie, but when animals are involved and they get hurt, I don't want to see that shit. I love animals. <laughs> oh, God damn it! I need to go far enough. The next day, Rory visits Kyle at home, freaking out about the money that he owes for the mescaline, and we start to see further rays of hope coming from bad boy Kyle over here, who promises to not let Rory get hurt by Shane. We gotta get our name put on there, huh? Finally, these fuckos That's pick up an instrument. Simple. Fairy, would you mind getting us some fucking beers? None of these bastards know how to play, do they? Let's see how accurate that is. <laughs> Sounds about right. Later, when the police show up at Shane's house with an arrest warrant, I assume he bails because the next scene shows him at Kyle's bedroom door asking if he can crash there. 
We get some more backstory from Shane's perspective, which isn't anything particularly amazing, but Eric Mabius is a solid actor, at least in this role for sure. Now out of curiosity, I IMDB'd this bastard and my jaw about dropped to the floor when I found out he played Dean Hess in the OC. Thanks for the trip down memory lane. Some of you just went, why the fuck is Michael talking about the OC? Well, that's for another video. Oh, this is my lucky day. Look, honestly, OC fan or not, look at the difference in character here. Now, I know he aged, time passed, and all that, but it's just really hard for me to look at this Superman-looking motherfucker and realize, holy shit, that's the fucking crazy guy from Black Circle Boys. Like, Chloe confronts Kyle at her locker about Shane's lunatic behavior, pretty much dumps him on the spot, and like clockwork, pissed off the crow rolls up with the Joker behind him, complaining about being kicked out of school. Now, later that night, they break into the school and bag the guard start beating his ass. Kyle damn near loses his mind, realizing what he's doing. Get the fuck out of my face right now! Having some second thoughts about his new friends, he ignores them later that day and instead heads over to the swim team and watches them practice. Foreshadowing. Not wanting to be ignored, Shane drops in through Kyle's window later looking for another place to crash, but Kyle isn't having it. He continues his devil psycho babble bullshit and the tension starts to heat up again. You're not my brother. Don't start digging your own fucking grave. You don't want to do that. Now after school, he meets up with Chloe and begins telling her and us for the first time more of what really happened to Terry. He landed between two buildings, and he's there for a while. Once again, good pacing, honestly. This movie hasn't felt like it wasted much of my time with stupid shit. And he was drunk. Cops. It took forever to come back, because they were still pissed at us about their car. We get more of these really great long holds here. I swear, it feels like sometimes you're really just sitting there on the dock with them. His neck was broken. He was still alive when he landed. Now Kyle starts to participate a bit more in class, signaling that uh, maybe things are starting to change for him. But before we can really find out, Shane and the Joker burst into his room sometime later where like a good little boy is doing his homework. Peer pressure wins as it always does apparently and Kyle joins these two in the woods to get high. And Rory comes out all, hey. hey. He pays up and suffers at the hands of Maura Shane's manipulation. I'm all paid up. You get us a fire going, a nice fire going. I'll give you your tattoo. Tonight. Like that. Oh, serious? Passing the initial test, things really begin to heat up in the moment as Kyle, up, Kyle. recognizing what's he's going on, he's tries he's to save the humiliation of Rory, but he's stopped by the Joker, and even Rory himself, the poor little confused guy. Kyle, shut the fuck up! Say it right. I love the father. Shane, leave him alone! That's it. Say it again. Say it again. I love the father. I love the father. Take it off. Come on. Rory? Jesus Christ, this gets edge of your seat intense. I love the father! Make Think about rolling up on a bunch of weird ass kids in the middle of the night screaming. I'm not the father! Kyle is tackled by the Joker and made to stay and watch a gruesome end to Rory. Now remember this? Yeah, that sucks. Chloe finds him sometime later and with the guilt eating him alive, he can barely function it seems. He wakes up to find the assholes in his house and the threats continue. Do you intend to do something about it? Later that night, Kyle heads back to the fire pit finds Rory's body, and finally does the right thing, making a phone call to the detective who gave him the card earlier. Sorry. You know about all the shit, Kyle. All the shit you were involved in with Shane. Take the card. Chloe gives him a ride to the station where he cuts a deal. He agrees to lead the detectives to Rory's body, but it is missing when they get there. Now he receives a phone call the next day from the detective, I guess. What? Kyle Sherman Ray. Is it true you were doing hallucinogens? What? Is it possible there was no murder? That Shane and the others were trying to scare you? One of Shane's minions pretending to be a cop? Fuck, I don't know. The way they deliver these lines is confusing. But in the next scene, Kyle gets ambushed by Grego, Shane, and the men in black. <laughs> Take the bag off, you dumbass. Now he's captured and Gay Wahlberg acts all gay for a while. I like you. Is that clear? Suddenly Kyle's waking up to Chloe over him bedside and he calls the detectives to try and weasel out of his deal. Joker and Shane have a fucking hilarious moment right here. Oh, what are you thinking? Nothing, just shit. 
That's the funniest scene in the movie. That is fucking just too funny. Oh, what are you thinking? Nothing, just shit. He kind of looks like Corey Feldman at this angle. What the fuck? Now, Shane grills his ass over the detective, and you gotta feel a little bad for these kids, in all honesty. Not too much, because I don't want to trivialize the actions that these kids performed, much less the consequences they should have to face for them. But they were obviously emotionally damaged and neglected youth, even fatherless in some cases, so... You're a good fucking soldier, aren't you? I'm a good soldier. You're the fucking best, man. You're a fucking gobot, aren't you? Huh? Having an enigmatic leader like Shane call you his best soldier in his army, you can see why it would appeal to a damaged child like that. And then Shane just fucking murders him out of nowhere. Chloe and Kyle have more screen time where he's starting to jokingly doubt Shane ever had any kind of powers. Diving into the lake, seeking some sort of explanation, he quickly discovers the trick to Shane's endless breath spell. Inside of this culvert, pipe, sewer grate, tunnel, I don't know what the fuck this is. Overflow chamber? He finds a candlelit altar of sorts. Damn it, I'm leaning towards having to research this and find out how much of this shit's factual and how much of it isn't. Was there really a fucking altar under the lake? Okay, finding both the bodies of Rory and the Joker? Possibly? Now, as anyone will be able to predict, Shane pops up and grabs him, holding him at knife point with a box cutter, claiming he did it to protect them all. I've heard that shit before. I did find this performance pretty genuine, though. We get more of those continuous shots, which do this movie and this type of story utter justice as Kyle begins to play the manipulation game himself. Those motherfuckers were weak. Shane continues to lose what little sanity he has left, and both actors deliver a truly awesome performance here. A scuffle ensues over the blade. Why are they choking each other? <laughs> I was a swim team guy. He's bound to still have some muscle left. Now, beating the shit out of Shane, he resurfaces and tells Chloe what he found. Now, this last scene in the movie really does piss me off. I know the idea of this was to say, hey, it's some time later, all that shit is passed, and Kyle is back to being the good kid on the swim team. Good grades and all that shit. Fine and fucking dandy in theory, but you can't summarize all that shit up in 15 seconds. What are the consequences to him, to Shane? Did he and Chloe stay together? I don't fucking care about that. Either way, the credits roll, and I guess now I gotta look this shit up. Five minutes later. I'm gonna refer to them by their movie names. There was never a guitar involved. He never tried to get a band going that was all for the movie. Like that. And he never actually... Shane didn't murder the other guy. And there certainly wasn't an altar underneath a lake with a candle or anything. Basically, he murdered Rory in the woods. And then, like a moron, he actually brought people out there and showed them the body like he was proud of it or something. And about two weeks later, an anonymous tip was sent in. They got the body. They got him. And his buddy who in the movie was played by the guy I kept calling the Joker or whatever, he got let go eventually because of uh, not enough proof, things like that. He was acquitted, basically. So a lot of this movie was made up just to be, the, um, just to be dramatic for the movie. But uh, I'm okay with that because I found it kind of entertaining, honestly. I enjoyed parts of this movie a lot. I thought it was well-paced. I thought it was decently written. But the most important thing about this movie is how well these people acted. For such a passed over, possibly forgotten, not important movie from back in the day. I mean, I never even heard of this fucking thing. I found it on YouTube for free. It was surprisingly interesting. Maybe not interesting. It was just, I don't know. It was, it was well acted. If, if there's nothing else I can say about it, this had wonderful performances by good actors. Everybody did good, except for maybe Wahlberg. He was just all, I don't know, whatever. Anyway... Would I recommend this movie to you? Actually, yes, um, I would. I usually don't bother recommending based on true event stories because they always seem to add so much extra shit in there that's not true. And I find that slightly misleading. So if you do the research, considering what you would expect to be dramatized about a story such as this, I'm kind of glad they did thinking about it now because it would have been boring just getting a typical murder story. I mean, they tried to gussy it up. You know, they added the, the band, they added the guitar thing. So, I don't know. I don't have much to complain about. Good pacing. Good actors. It's watchable. Give it a pass.